5G networks are supposed to transfer data over 100 times faster than the current mobile standard 4G LTE. Sounds very impressive. But how does it work? And how does that help me? One, two, three, four. Downloading a 5 gigabyte movie using 5G should only take about 40 seconds. With the current LTE standard, it takes about 7 minutes. But impressive transfer rates aside, 5G is supposed to completely change the way we use the Internet. And we are not just talking about smartphones, laptops and tablets. Especially in the area of autonomous driving, the technology could play an important role. Driverless cars need huge amounts of data for navigation, and that preferably in real time. The current LTE technology is too slow and unreliable for autonomous vehicles. Faster mobile connections with larger capacities are needed. But what's so new about 5G? How does a mobile network work anyway? And do we really need that? Let's take a look. The G in 5G stands for generation. So we are moving towards the fifth generation of mobile networks. 1G became a worldwide standard in 1979, even though it only got its name much later. However, the network allowed mobile calls only. The radio signals were still analog. 2G has been around since 1991. It's the first wireless technology using digital signals. That way, data could be sent and received. SMS was born. However, the transmission was still very slow. At first, the network could transmit about 1.8 kilobyte per second. If it had been possible at that time, it would have taken more than a month to download the 5 gig film I mentioned in the beginning. 3G became an international standard in 2001. It made the mobile internet possible, thanks to a much higher speed, 48 kilobyte per second. But still, in the early days of 3G, it would have taken about 24 hours to download our movie. In 2010, 4G made everything even faster again, with 12.5 megabyte per second. Now we can easily make mobile video calls or stream films on the smartphone. The current average download time for the 5 gig movie is seven minutes. With 5G, mobile networks rise to turbo speeds. 5G is supposed to be 100 times faster than 4G. Radio waves in the millimeter range make this possible. But that doesn't only bring advantages. The infrastructure that's in place can help to implement the new technology, but in order to reach the full 5G potential, we need devices that meet the technical requirements. For example, smartphones. Not only that, we need a whole new network. But there's one problem. The smaller the radio waves, the smaller their range. For a nationwide network, we would need way more stations than we have at the moment. Simply put, a mobile network is a communication network whose last step of the connection is wireless. So, my smartphone sends out a request, for example, a Google search to the next radio tower. From there, it's sent to the cable network, my request is processed on some server somewhere, and then travels back to the radio tower, which sends it back to my mobile phone. For the wireless part of the process, the data is turned into digital radio signals. In order for this to work, I have to be within the range of a radio tower. In most cities, the radio areas, called cells, are so close to each other that there are no gaps. In Germany, the 4G network mainly uses the frequencies 800, 1800 and 2600 MHz. Hertz is the unit of frequency and is defined as one cycle per second. The name comes from German physicist Heinrich Hertz. Important for the networks, the higher the frequency, the higher the speed and capacity of the network. This is important in areas with a lot of people and a high volume of data. Lower frequencies have the advantage that they have a greater range. An 800 MHz signal can travel further than 10 kilometers. That's very useful in rural areas. 5G works with gigahertz. This is a significantly higher frequency with a much worse range. A 28 gigahertz signal has a maximum range of about 500 meters. That was the result of a test by Samsung in 2018. To have 5G coverage without gaps, we would need one radio tower per kilometer. Plus, the tower has to be connected with fiberglass and needs access to electricity. Sounds expensive. Here's what telephone provider Telefonica found out for Germany. More than 200,000 mobile phone locations would be needed to create a nationwide 5G network. 
Estimated costs, 76 billion euros. Another problem. The 5G waves have trouble penetrating buildings. So if we want to use the network indoors, we would probably need more and better routers. The immense costs are one of the reasons why the technology is so controversial. For mobile network providers, a nationwide 5G network is therefore not very attractive, of course. But the industry seems to really demand it. 5G is like having high-powered Wi-Fi routers dispersed all over the city to function as the network nodes. It will function more like your home network and much, much faster. But to download a 5G movie on my smartphone in 40 seconds, do I really need this? Maybe not. Electronics manufacturers are already raving about all the new possibilities. For example, we could use VR glasses anywhere and chat with friends in VR, for example. Until now, the glasses can only be used with powerful computers or consoles because they need too much data. Also, augmented reality apps and devices could benefit. But of course, it's too early to say how 5G would change our daily lives. In other areas, we already know more about the new possibilities. For example, the dream of autonomous vehicles could finally come true. The industry is also experimenting with other transmission technologies, but with 5G, the systems could function optimally. 5G also has a big advantage for manufacturers. Huge amounts of data can be set via the network, and that enables them to evaluate the vehicle data with great accuracy. Also, our work lives could change. With 5G, data transmission almost happens in real time. The delay, or lag until the signal reaches the receiver, is only one millisecond. As a comparison, blinking takes about 400 milliseconds. For example, a mechanic in Germany could operate a robot in Japan and use it to repair a system. Or a Swiss doctor could help a colleague in Mumbai perform a complicated surgery with the help of a high-resolution video stream. Another example. The Internet of Things is still very limited at the moment. A 4G network can serve about 4,000 devices per square kilometer. 5G manages about a million in the same area. Apart from the smart home devices, this creates new possibilities for the industry, especially in the field of transport and logistics. Another use. Smart devices could communicate better with each other. For example, my smartphone could autonomously pay the car I rented. How 5G will develop, however, is something we will probably find out in a couple of years. After 3G and 4G were introduced, it still took years for the first application to really become relevant. So you can definitely take your time with the purchase of a 5G smartphone, even if manufacturers are already promoting 5G devices. What do you expect from 5G? Let us know in the comments. And if you have a question on a digital topic, let us know as well. Hope you enjoyed this video. Bye. One, two, three.